camera, audio, and computer. Not bad. Not too shabba shabba -roo. What's up you guys, Mike Lazarecki here. Today we are going to be going over the basic entry level like beginner guide to getting started with Adobe Lightroom in 2022 or whenever it is that you might start using Lightroom if you're not already. Now to clear this up, there's actually two versions of Lightroom that are available through Adobe right now. There's Adobe Lightroom Classic and there's Adobe Lightroom. I will be teaching you guys how to get started in Adobe Lightroom. I've used Lightroom Classic for a long, long time as well, but what I've been using most frequently is Adobe Lightroom. And that's mostly because it is now cross-platform between laptop, iPad, and my phone. So it gives me the most flexibility out of the two programs, and that's really what I recommend you do as well. All right, so with that, let's dive into the computer and get started. All right, so when you first open up Adobe Lightroom, you're going to actually have this albums area here if this is the first time you've used it, you won't have anything in there. That's why we're doing this. What's nice is you have these folders here and then you can click them down or twirl them down and you'll have different albums in there with different batches of photos, okay? So what we wanna start with is a folder. So we're gonna start with create a folder and then we're gonna say 2022 YouTube. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that Lightroom, in addition to giving you the ability to process raw photos, it also gives you the ability to organize your photo library, which is why we have these folders and albums. So use that how you will. I highly recommend that you come up with your own, you know, organizational hierarchy. Um, I like to start mine out with the year and then basically what that particular section's about. And then I create different albums for different shoot days underneath that. So I'll show you. Uh, we create that. We don't want to select inside this folder 2022 fall photos, mostly because this will give you the opportunity to s select to put this folder inside of another folder if you want to. You know, use that how you will. Create. Now we have 2022 YouTube here and you can see we have no, no albums inside of there. So what we want to do is create an album. And we're going to say, let's see, it is November. So we'll say November Lightroom Basics. Okay. And inside, now we want to select that. Inside of folder 2022 YouTube. All right. Create. And now you can see when you twirl 2022 YouTube, we have this guy, Lightroom Basics. So now that we've created our album, we're gonna go in here and add photos. And basically what we're gonna do is we'll find some images that we want to import. We wanna hit review for import and it brings them in. Now, what's nice here is like here on the right, you can see this one says previously added. If you have a photo that you're trying to import into a new album and it's already been added in the past, it will gray itself out and not let you bring it in and it'll say previously added. This is great because for somebody like me who doesn't remember what they've imported, <laughs> it tells you. Uh, and it figures that out based on the metadata and all of that that's attached to the raw photo. So we're gonna bring these guys in. This is a batch of photos that I shot that is basically just uh, showing the difference between using and not using a mist filter. Once you import the photos, then they fall into your album. And then the next step, once I've imported the photos, is to go through and rate them. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm kind of going through and making selects. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna choose the ones that I like the best, and I'm gonna try to make sure that I rate them with Usually I start with two stars. Um, so if I go through here, I'm gonna hit the number two on the keyboard. Then you can see that it selects two stars. And then let's see, I like that one. I really like that one. Or whatever, I like that one, we'll go with that. So I only didn't select this photo. But now what I can do to utilize that rating system 
is I can come up here to this little funnel looking icon, click on that guy, and now I can sort what's available here or only show anything that's two stars or more. And you can see that it now doesn't show me that one that doesn't have a rating. The nice thing about the rating system is it allows you to have control over knowing which images you really liked, you've rated them, now you can sort by that rating and Basically, once you start to edit them, if you still really like it, you can bump it up to a three, and then it makes it to kind of the next round. And the idea here is to make it so that once you start looking at the photos in your, your organizational library, you're able to distill it down to like the best of the best. If you use this right, you should be able to actually tell it to show me only five-star photos, and that should give you basically portfolio-level images, if you want to use it that way. You don't have to. So. To get started on processing the photos, let's go ahead and I'll select this image and we'll go over here and open up these sliders. So now that we've imported our photos and we are ready to start editing these photos, we have some basic adjustments available, okay? And if you like your photos just the way they are, what you can do is just export them as is. But if you're gonna do this process, I highly recommend you use the tools that you have available here to really enhance these photos. Typically, my editing process is a three-step process. Step A, I'm gonna go in and make my corrections. So I, like, if the white balance is off or if it needs to have some adjustments to the exposure, this is the step that I'm gonna do that in. Honestly, that's the nice thing about shooting in RAW is that it gives you the ability to update or change those things after the fact. So if you screwed up and didn't properly set your white balance, you can fix that now. Step B is where I'll go through and do enhancements and cleanups. That's where I'll add different masks and things like that and alter the light if I need to and make different enhancements or if I need to paint out some blemishes on something, I can do that in this phase. And then step C is where I'll go in and I'll add creative looks using presets or other means of doing so. So let's start with that. Step A, let's go into corrections. Let's make sure that our white balance is looking right. So I'm gonna go into color. I'm gonna come in here and just select this. That kind of straightens up that color a little bit. Close this guy down. Uh, I think it's looking a little dark, so I'm gonna raise the exposure a little. And then we can pull down some of the highlights raise the shadows to bring up some of that shadow detail. And then we can just kind of make those pure whites pop a little bit and throw a little more contrast in by deepening those blacks. And we can make individual adjustments to different colors. Now you can select down here and impact colors using these sliders, or you can use this little target guy and go in here and I want to impact this color you can see that we can either blast the green or we can pull it down. I'm gonna pull it down a little. It's just an option you have. We can also maybe pull down the saturation a little bit, but pop the vibrance. And just helps to kind of keep it nice looking. All right, so that's good enough for corrections. And now we're gonna go into enhancements and cleanup. I'm gonna go in here and zoom in and I'm not liking the way that, I don't know, this, uh, the J on Fujika. I'm not, I just don't like it. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm going to, um, sorry, I'm gonna go to the healing brush. I'm gonna increase the size of the healing brush and I am going to paint that guy out. Looks like we missed a spot. Maybe we need to feather that less. Okay, good enough for now. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. And let's see, also we wanna go in here with a mask and I wanna highlight the camera specifically, for example. So I'm going to add a radial gradient mask. All right. And what this will do is this will allow you to choose like a localized area 
where these exposure adjustments or whatever adjustments you choose to make will only affect in that area. Now, this isn't really what we want because we can increase the brightness here, but I like the exposure that we were at there, so I'm gonna reset that, and what I'm gonna do is invert the gradient, okay? Now it's, only, it's gonna affect everything on the outside of it. I'm going to pull that exposure down, and it's kind of like a vignette, but now it's like targeted where you want it to be. So there's that. Uh, some other really cool things that you can do in here are more advanced. Uh, it, it's smart enough to be able to, if you, you can basically say create new mask and say subject, and it's smart enough to find a subject if there's like a person in the frame. It's pretty amazing. We'll get into that in a later video. All right, now, done a little bit of uh, enhancements and cleanup. Now we're gonna get into doing creative looks. So what we'll do here, is we'll go in and check out the presets panel. Now, I'm gonna use some of my presets which are available on my website for purchase uh, under Retro Deluxe. Now with presets, I like to always kind of let everybody know that this is what I look at as a starting point. This is not the end of the editing process, but some of these do make it look really good right out of the package. So what we could do is go to Ecta, that looks pretty cool. We can adjust how much of that we want to add. So maybe somewhere in the 60 range looks good. And then I'm going to bump the exposure up a little bit more because that did darken it a little bit. And I'm liking the look of that. But now once we've added our preset, we can go back through and make further adjustments if we want to. Um, basically, I might actually bump that saturation back up again and let's go in take a look here let's really pump up that green but smaller size and a little rougher from there once you've got your photo where you'd like it to to be as far as the overall look of it if you want to export a jpeg that you can print from you can print right out of Lightroom. I like to export a JPEG so I have a finished image, especially if you wanna upload it to social media or anything like that. What you're gonna do is you'll select this guy, export one photo, and then typically I say export. I don't do the, the presets because I like to have a little bit more control. I'll hit export. This will take me through to this dialog box and then you're gonna select your export settings Image type JPEG, you hear your options are like TIFF, DNG, original plus settings, things like that. But I like, you know, JPEG's fine. Uh, full size dimensions, quality 100. You can import your own watermark and just check this and it'll include that watermark for you. And then all metadata, copyright only, things like that. Now, with this output sharpening, what that's gonna do is as it's outputting your JPEG, it's going to sharpen it specifically for what you tell it to. Usually, because I'm most of the time now posting this stuff online, I'll do output sharpening on screen, but I typically leave it at standard because I've already done the type of sharpening that I would want to do in Lightroom by this point. And then we just leave it as sRGB most of the time and export one photo. It's gonna ask you to find where you wanna export it. We'll just use the desktop at this point. Hit export, and there you have it. It's all done. So now we can go back in and look, hey, there's your exported photo on the desktop. We're gonna open that guy up, and there she is, ready to print. All right guys, so this was a little bit longer video, but I hope you guys got something valuable out of it. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments below and I uh, will do more in-depth photo editing uh, videos moving forward in the future. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and check out this video for more helpful tips and I will see you in the next one. Later.